Okay, I'm live. So I called this thing, and this is Sandy Shellis, and welcome to, uh, it's actually a gorgeous day in Florida where I am. And uh, I got so inspired today because I've been reading The End of Ice. And it's taking me forever to read this book. And I thought maybe that what I would do is talk a little bit about my experience reading this book because it's pretty, it's an epic book. And how to read it without falling apart, um, without visualizing the worst. It's, it's really an intense book. So Dar, for those of you, I mean, I'm sure everybody knows by now, um, I'm hoping to interview Dar Jamel probably when he's finished with all of his other interviews um, everywhere, which is fine. Somebody's playing basketball next door, but um, he is a reporter for Truth Out. He's an author of Beyond the Green Zone, Dispatches from an Unembedded Journalist in Occupied Iraq, The Will to Resist, Soldiers Who Refuse to Fight in Iraq and Afghanistan, and the Mass Destruction of Iraq, Disintegration of a Nation, co-authored uh, with William Rivers Pitt. Jamal st spent more than a year reporting from Iraq as well as from Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Turkey over the past 15 years. Also an accomplished mountaineer who has worked as a volunteer rescue ranger on Denali, he won the Martha Gellhorn Prize for Journalism and is a 2018 winner of the Izzy Award for Excellence in Independent Journalism. He's also a recipient of the James Aronson Award for Social Justice Journalism. Of course, now here comes the mail to make a lot of noise. I'm not home, obviously. Um, and the Joe Calloway Award for Civic Courage and Five Project Centered Awards. Now we have to wait for this to go away because it's noisy. All right. So I started this book a while ago and I've been corresponding a little bit with Dar because I want to talk to him for, for Environmental Coffee House. And I really don't care if it, I'm the last one he talks to because everybody else can do it. I want to have a different, a, different, um, a different focus, maybe a little bit of a different viewpoint on our interview. But here I want to talk about how to read this book because, and why it's taken me so long. So I started out, you know, uh, reading about the first chapters. He talks about, he's a mountaineer. And you know, I don't know much about climbing glaciers and mountains and all. And he, he's really a good writer, but he takes you with him in there, you know, up there into the glaciers, into the tent, into the storm winds. And of course, my inquisitive mind I can't just read the chapter. So I go off into the rabbit hole on the internet. Well, I was camping, everybody else went on the canoe, and I went, um, I read, you know, and I, and I had connectivity. So I go online, and I'm trying to find out, um, okay, when you're up in, on Denali, and you're in the middle, and there's 70 mile an hour winds, and where do you, where do you go? Where do you pee and poop, right? Where do you go to the bathroom? So I go into the rabbit hole and I find mountaineer websites telling us all about how some of them put kitty litter in the side. And if you're with a buddy, you better really like them because um, you're sitting there and you're pissing and shitting with them. But that took me off on a whole other you know, thing. So when you're reading this book, if you're like me, you're going to be inquisitive and you may want to have your connection which is as disgusting as that sounds, your connection next to you so you can then go into other things that occur to you when you're reading the book. Hi, Anthony. He likes nature from a distance. Um, but this book is, so all the chapters, I haven't even finished it yet. And today particularly really got me. Um, when I was reading about Alaska. Now, I'm staying with my elderly parents. But my elderly parents were amazing people. And in the 1990s, they flew in their plane to Alaska and flew all over. And they have photographs of 
all of the things that were, you know, still preserved, weren't melted yet in the 1990s, but my dad won't, he, I mean, they don't know if they can find the photo album for me, which I told them, this is like super important because I can use those pictures and either scan them or photograph them and uh, use them for some kind of piece to either give to somebody else, most likely, or, uh, you know, make a little one of those stupid videos I do. But this is where I go in, in books like this. And when, so he, the first chapter was Denali and it was pretty fascinating. It was really fascinating. And all about the glaciers and uh, the, the melts and, and, but what got me today really, the, the chapter, the canary in the, in the coal mine, and he is in Alaska and talking about the indigenous way of life. And, um, <gasps> Bumble, hey. Okay. Welcome, Bumble. Oh, my God. I'm not going to get all messed up with everybody, but thank you for the comments and thanks being, for being here. This is just an epic book. And, and I'm not done, like I said. But I had to come on and tell you, you've got to, you've got to read this. It's profoundly sad. And that was another thing. It's profoundly sad. Even though I read these kinds of things every single day for that page. I read articles everywhere all the time I'm reading stuff. It is not the same as a book. And I read books, but I haven't been reading books as frequently because I, I kind of got lazy, you know, and I'm listening to videos, and yes, videos are great. They have their place. You can learn so much. But when you read a book like this, your whole body becomes enmeshed in that book. Your mind is there. I was on Denali. I was in the coral reefs diving with him. I was there. And I made it my business then for whatever I wanted to within the chapter to go and look up what he was talking about further. And that's how you have to read this book. The End of Ice, it's profoundly sad though. Today, I had a physical feeling when I was reading that chapter. And if I can find what I wanna show you, you know, about the people that live up in the, um, in the Alaska range, I literally had to close the book, go to the bathroom, cry, and I wanted to throw up. Because all I kept thinking of is, well, they have a subsistence lifestyle, and they, they are the last hunter-gatherers all over. Osama's just joined us. Hi, Osama. And in such a profound sadness to, to read this and, and learn about, and he's interviewing people from all over that work, scientists and even the mayor of a town, and, and these people are giving him this story all over, and I wish I could find the uh, the one about everything about glaciers and what glaciers do. Hey, Vegematic has joined us too. I'm so glad because I really got inspired today, and unbelievable. I went for a swim in my mother's pool. I'm really spoiled here. My, you know, it's Florida, and I went for a swim in the pool, and I regrouped because. I fell apart this morning, semi fall apart from this chapter. And it really bothered me. I'm, I guess I just love the, I'm more suited for the cold. Down here, I would never make it when it's sweaty and all. I don't wanna live inside in air conditioning all the time. I just don't think I'm set on it. But there was something really profound that I, you know, I read, well, everything was profound. Um, he had talked about Switzerland, how they've even taken to covering the glaciers with white blankets during the summer in a failing attempt to stop ice from melting. But it's really the story of the indigenous people and what they're losing. Indigenous people are on the front lines of this everywhere. Do I, does this look like an indigenous place? This is freaking snowbirds, Florida. Unbelievable. And I'm not putting them down because my parents are... They were explorers, and that's why I was looking for their the whole photo album from their Alaska trip because it was just my mom and my stepdad flying all over Alaska. You know, they did this for 40 years, and he's, uh, you know, they are consumers and they are fossil fuel users, but he's incredibly philanthropic, and he gave up his wings flying um, 
two years ago at age 87. So there are people that have been everywhere and I live vicariously through them because they've been everywhere and they've given and done and helped and that's who they are. I guess I'm pretty lucky. So if I could find this piece, they, when they were talking about the, the birds and the seal and, the, and all of the, there's a particular bird and, and he's talking about the Aleut, the treatment of the Aleut improved. It was the history of the people up there. Um, he says, this is nothing, nothing. There used to be thousands of them. And he's talking about the, um, the fur seals. And these people, what they lived on for, for forever. Um, and he talked about the, the halibut. And he oh, he talked about, and he talked to people about the phytoplankton and then the food chain and how these small feeding sources go up the food chain and that's why we're seeing all these deaths because of this toxin that's getting into um, the food chain. And it is heartbreaking. But those of us down this rabbit hole have an obligation to kind of teach others how to read a book like this. This kind of profound sadness when you know there is no turning around from this. There's no amount of carbon sequestration or um, any of it that's going to turn us around from the end of ice, that's going to turn us around from the inevitable. I'm not telling you when it is, how it is. I'm just saying it is. And when you read a profound book like this one, and again, not even at the end, but it is. It's our responsibility to educate those around us that are receptive on how to handle these things, these kind of books, if they read them. And I'll tell you what, you know, my parents are somewhat political and we're having a conversation and I was telling them about this video that this other guy's head in the box um, did this afternoon live and it was political, you know, and, uh, and, and it's just, but everybody, even them, you know, the political sphere, where we are and what we are, we understand, we get it, we know, we know. But it's hard with those that don't. Even my parents know. They're at the end, they're in the 80s. They reap the rewards of life. They worked very hard. Me, I think I'm just floating on the coattails. You know, I come down here from Western New York, and I was really lucky enough to be able to hook up with Hambone, who took such good care of. It was just me, Sandy, Hambone, and Chris, three girls and him. He took care of us. He, it would never have been possible for me to be able to camp, but because he was that person that was so thoughtful, it was all taken care of. And I was able to have three days, and that's when I started, you know, the book even though I had started this book 50 times before I left. Um, but I'm also reading David Wright's Desert Soliloquy, you know, the misanthrope, uh, in the, he's a misanthrope in the desert, but um, this one's really critical. So, guys, I, I won't keep you, but if there are people that read books, this is the one. And I would, Oh, I wanted to go back to that story. You know, my, my folks were political somewhat, and I told them we were having this conversation. I said, you know, I'd like to send this book to all of those morons on Fox and, and make them read it. But they probably don't have any more than um, a 30-second sound bite ability, you know, or a 30-second meme ability. You know, I see it from Facebook sometimes. I think people really respond to the things and the information they can digest quickly and they share it quickly and the articles that are a little bit more lengthy or, or have a little bit more depth or a little bit more difficult. But that's why we're here. Up to us, guys. And you think I'm sitting in Australia with my mother's hat, her Outback hat. Knowing her, she probably wore it in Australia <laughs> on some kind of something. But anyway... That's what privilege is, and they worked hard for it, I suppose. Me, I'll go back to Western New York and have to drag up firewood and go back to being, you know, real life. Um, 
Thank you. Let us all remember that there's someone next to us, may not know, may not see, may not feel, understand what we are, but there's a glimpse and just be there to catch them and pick them up. And I learned another thing on this trip really important. We're not as divided as we think. We're not going to let the, the whole, this whole cluster of what is our government divide us. And I met somebody this week that was special and politically completely different than me. I mean, awfully different, but I would not let that ever get in my way because the things that we had commonality on and, and the things that we, we felt in each other were just the best. And I realized then and there that you get rid of social media and we're okay. We're not that different. I mean, here we are. So it's curbing social media maybe. I don't know, you're watching me on social media. I guess it's how it's used, but we weren't on social media. We weren't looking at it. I was the only one because they went canoeing and I was a big baby and didn't want to get in the middle because I kept thinking that, oh my God, what if they, got, you know, Hamlin's like, likely to go for an hour and a half, and they did. And, you know, what am I going to do, sit there and whine like, oh, I heard, I don't know why I want to go back. You know, I didn't want to do that. So my time was productively spent starting this. So that's the primer on how to read the end device. Um, even for someone as seasoned as I am down this rabbit hole, and I never get upset. I don't even internalize most of it because I'm so numb to it. This book, that's it. Every chapter is a tear. And you have to be able to handle it and help those come along with you. So thanks. I think I've been live 17 minutes. That's a lot. You guys have a most wonderful day. Uh, tomorrow night I'm doing a thing on Facebook. I'm not, my, I'm not in it. I'm moderating Nicholas and Antonio and Nicholas. Antonio's interviewing Nicholas, the meteorologist, Nicholas Humphrey, on um, this latest paper on stratus, stratus, I forgot, the cloud. It's, it's a cloud study that just came out. And I'm so sorry for being a dumbass, forgetting the name of the cloud, because that's another thing since I've been down here. I've been wanting to know all the different names of clouds and Nicholas wants to talk about clouds, so there we go. <sighs> Thanks for coming along. Bye-bye, guys. Um, you guys have the most wonderful day. Density, weren't you just on Uphill Live? If he's on here. Oh, hi. I know they were doing something, but I didn't know if they were over, and I figured nobody would interfere with me like four of you would watch me anyway, but it was really important for me as I was motivated to talk about this. And I love you all. Bye-bye, guys. Hi, density. Oh, my gosh. I love you all, and now you're all together, and I'm going to go. You want to stay? <laughs> no, I got to go. Okay. <laughs>